Everyone, today's like a little uh, kind of string skipped arpeggio idea that follows like an E minor then a B minor harmony. So my first little phrase goes like this. Okay, now what I'm outlining here is a pretty classic shape for uh, an E minor triad kind of arpeggio. So the shape that I'm actually thinking of here is uh, 14 fit the D string, that's my root note of E. Then I've got a minor third T at the 12th fret of the G string. And then I've got um, a fifth, perfect fifth at the 16th fret of that G string there. Okay. Then I've got a root note again, 12th fret of the E string. And then a minor third, 15th fret of the E string there. So I have this kind of shape. Pretty classic kind of shape. You see a lot of players can use that. Uh, people like Paul Gilbert, um, you know, Andy James, all these kind of guys. So, the sequence I'm using with it though goes like this. Okay, now what I'm doing here is I'm going to, it's, little, it's basically f uh, four notes to the beat here, so I'm playing sixteenths. Now, first four notes go like this. So, I'm going to pull off sixteen to twelve in the G string, and I play that fourteenth fret D string back up to twelfth fret G string. So, it's a pull off. And then I pick, and then I pick again. Next four notes can continue from there, so I'm hammering on. Yeah, so like that. So it kind of goes. Okay. The picking wise, I'm hammering on 12 to 16, but I pick 12th fret of the E string here. And then I want to pick again to get that pull off in the E string there. So. It's, it's kind of a phrase, it's, it's almost like eight notes really, and it goes like this. Okay, so when you speed it up, um, it's a little bit more interesting. You get, uh, avoid any of those kind of, uh, uh, kind of uh, potential string clashes when you're doing the kind of a rolling of the fingers when you're doing like a economy picking approach. So this is why some people favour this kind of uh, string skipping approach it really kind of delineates each of the notes, cuts them out so they're nice and unique. So once I've done this opening bit, I have a little phrase goes like this. Now what I'm going to be doing here is I'm actually still playing an E minor arpeggio here, but I'm using this kind of little shape. What I'm doing is I'm looking at my root note here, 17th fret of the B string. It's an E there. And I've got a minor third, that again in the 15th fret of the E string. And then I've got a fifth here. Which is at the 16th fret of the G string there. Pretty standard little kind of three string arpeggio. But what the way I'm actually going to be playing is I'm going to pull off 19 to 15 in the high E string. Fourth to first finger I'm using there. You could use third if you wanted. Then I play 17th fret of that uh, B string there. And then 16th fret of the G string. But then I'm going to slide down to the 12th fret there. So it kind of goes like this. And then what I do is I play 14th fret of the D string and then hammer 12 to 16 in that G string there. So the whole little phrase goes like this. So it's an interesting way of getting, continuing that E minor arpeggio, but you're, you're breaking out of this shape. And you're sliding up to then come back down again. So that little phrase combined with the first bit goes like this. Okay, the thing to watch out for here is this transition. This jump here. You have to kind of jump and get that fourth finger position. So, you know, some people might not favour leading with the fourth finger. So you could try the third finger if you wanted to. I prefer to use my fourth. Um, but that, you have to jump like that to get up there. So that's our first little uh, section. That's our first bar and that outlines an E minor. Second bar goes at this. Okay, so it's predominantly based around a, you could say it's a B minor seven arpeggio because I'm starting kind of from a minor seventh here. But what I'm seeing again, that shape that I was playing for an E minor. Just think about playing it now from the A string. Exactly the same shape, but your root note is now B. But I start it off just a little bit. Uh, differently because I'm starting from this note and arguably that's a kind of minor seventh interval so you could say it's a minor seven arpeggio but that's what I'm doing there what I'm going to be doing for my first four notes is hammering first to second finger 12 to 14 in the A string 
Then I'm going to hammer 12 to 16 in the D string. So I have that. Okay. Then from here, I'm going to jump up 12 to 15 on the B string there. Uh, up and down. I'm using my first or third finger. And then I play 16th fret the D string. So there's four notes. So my first four notes got this. Next four notes. Okay. And I, I end it off. I mean, there's different ways you can view this. I mean, generally, you can see it's the top two strings of an E pentatonic minor, or you can say, well, I'm extending this kind of arpeggio uh, um, a little bit, and I've got like a you know 13th in there, all that sort of stuff. Really, what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of doing that in the top two strings. So I'm hammering 12 to 15 in the B string, and then I'm going to do a hammer and pull off 12 to 15 on the high E string. And then I play uh, 15 on that B string there, and then pull off to 12, like that. Okay, so that kind of goes. So when you put it together, the first bit goes like this. Okay, so again, same issues, I suppose, when you're jumping across the strings. It's difficult, it's, it's good for the picking hand to kind of work on that. I'm not talked about too much detail about how I'm picking that, but I mean, you know, you could be doing like a down. You know, down and up there if you wanted, then down, up, and then down. You know, various ways of kind of doing it. If I put the whole thing together though, play it slowly, it goes like this. Okay, so we'll have a little play around with that. The concepts you can use this idea of these arpeggios. Um, being able to take like a, an E minor shape, a classic string skip shape, shape, and then shift it up into like a little theme, or even a full kind of five string one. You know, it allows you to extend the range of an arpeggio rather than keep you fixed in position on the fingerboard. And of course it's easy to do that shape and just shift it about the place. Um, work out how you would change it for playing, uh, you know, major tonalities. All that type of stuff. Okay, so have a little muck about with that, as usual. Uh, check out the Facebook page, follow on Twitter for updates and stuff that you probably might not see in the YouTube channel. And um, I'll see you for the next lesson and next day.